Hello YouTube and especially all you knife lovers out there or outdoor lovers in general. Uh, I don't want to exclude anybody from this group. I wanted to bring you a quick uh, video today on my take um, on some experiences I had with uh, various knife and sheath types uh, in hopes that this helps you kind of uh, think about some things maybe you haven't thought of before, uh, shine some light on maybe a sheath design you didn't know was out there or hadn't been able to find video on, or if you're a hammock camper like me, something that helps you solve maybe a couple issues that you might have experienced uh, using a larger knife and a sheath uh, while you're out in the outdoors. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. The two sheaths I'm mainly gonna be comparing or a standard hip style sheath here. This happens to be the Bark River Bravo 1 in the current uh, leather uh, sheath design. And then this is the Gunny in a Bushcrafter A style sheath. Now, you may know that that doesn't come with that style sheath, but I've put it in uh, a Bushcrafter A style and I've actually got the handy scanning modification added. Now I did do a video, uh, probably the one right before this, that talks a little bit about uh, my new Bark River knives and the sheath options that I chose to go with for those. So if you want a close-up look of this, I'm sorry, close-up look at this and find out a few more details, uh, check out that video. I'll have it linked below. So basically what I wanted to do is give you a little bit of a close-up on the uh, sheaths here and tell you a little bit about what I like and don't like about each of them with regard to uh, my personal preferences on height and how they function with a hammock. All right, so here are the two sheaths that I just mentioned a little bit closer up view. Again, the Bravo 1 in its sheath and the Bushcrafter A style sheath with a handy scanning mod. And this would work with obviously any knife that fits in the sheath, but I'm happy to use it with a gunny currently. So what I was gonna show you first of all is to give you just a look at the, how high each knife sits relative to one another. Um, this is obviously much higher um, than uh, the dangler sheath, as you'd expect. Um, the retention is a lot better to the body. There's a little bit less movement, so walking around, you don't get the swing, obviously, that you're going to get with the dangler. But there are a couple other things to consider, and, and I wanted to talk to you about those. So first of all, it's, it's retraction. These style sheaths typically don't give you much problem in the way of, of pulling your knife out because they're rigid to uh, the body and the belt loop is very big and if you have a big uh, belt going through it uh, then you don't have a lot of movement and everything stays kind of rigid and taut and you don't have any problems getting it out dropping it back in or whatever as long as you can keep your snap out of the way obviously um, so that functions as you'd expect now with a dangler obviously something that that you need to consider if you haven't used these before is the motion um, as you walk around you can see this one swings quite a, a great deal. Uh, the the fabric uh, looped Falk Niven uh, sheath, they actually move, actually move as well, but not quite as much as this. Um, the danglers from Enzo that I've tried, anything that has a significant amount of drop from the belt line, it's gonna give you a lot of movement. Now with the Falk Nivens, uh, a lot of people have complained, especially in the Zytel sheaths, that they rattle around when you move through the woods. Now this typically isn't a problem, but if being quiet is your big concern, if you're using them for hunting or, or anything like that, then obviously that's something to consider. There are leather options um, that we will look at actually in an upcoming video I'm planning on doing with regard to the Enzo, but enough on that. So anyway, so the, the Bushcrafter A style sheath with a handy skinny mod has a lot of movement, which you could see as a pro or a con. Now a con is obviously it's constantly moving around. Um, it can make withdrawing and, and uh, putting your knife back a little bit cumbersome. I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a second, but this can actually come in really handy in, in the, um, the hammock uh, part of the video that's coming up in just a second. So right now I was gonna say there's two really options for taking your knife out. Um, obviously you can two hand withdraw it um, and uh, putting it back with one hand is never really a problem. Uh, luckily this still is, is tight enough around the knife that I don't have to worry if I'm jumping around about this knife uh, bouncing out. However, the leather on the black um, Bushcrafter is much thinner and I think maybe the die had something to do with, with softening it up because when I added the um, uh, Canadian Special to it, um, it's real loose. And I would not be surprised if jumping around you know, through the woods, I don't know why you might be doing that, but if for some reason you were running, um, that knife actually could come loose. So something to consider if you get the kind that doesn't have uh, snap retention. My experience has been so far that the standard uh, leather one is very tight. It's got great grip. There's nothing wrong with it, but the one that did come uh, died in the black was a little bit loose. So anyway, the other thing though is to consider is because this stays on pretty good here, the handy scanty part does, you can one hand withdraw this 
just by letting this come up and then letting the loop come all the way to the top of this loop here, this little ring to the top of this loop, and letting the, the belt um, loop here just grab on your belt. And so it'll eventually stop and you can just withdraw the knife with one hand. And that's honestly how I do it. Now over the long haul, that may put too much wear and tear on it, I don't know, um, but I haven't experienced any problems with it now, so no, uh, no problems there. Uh, but anyway, there's a look at how the height difference would be adjusted or how they compare between the two. And obviously with um, this Bushcrafter A, if you didn't have the handy scandy, it would sit actually right about here, which would put it higher than the, the Bravo one. So obviously different sheaths, different knives, different options. Uh, just kind of a look at the two. I didn't see a lot of uh, videos showing, illustrating how the handy scandy um, add-on did work. So there's a look about how high the belt uh, loop is compared to another one, how low the knife slits and the kind of movement you get between the two. Um, so anyway, now I'm gonna kind of show you why I actually prefer this type of sheath uh, as a hammock camper. When you sit in a hammock, you can see right now the problem is the fabric goes immediately off the edge of the leg and up. I'm trying to get this uh, recorder out of the way here. Sorry, hopefully you're still getting audio. Um, but uh, the fabric, because it goes up at a hard angle like this, it causes a problem for the sheaths because I don't know if you can see it from there. I'll change to a close-up in just a second. But this protrusion through the fabric is actually the tip of the Bravo One sheath because there's not a lot of give. It's hard to move it up at an angle and it's hard to get it to go straight out because the hip belt, um, the hip uh, loop and the belt that it's attached to are twisting and really becoming really tight. The Bushcrafter A style sheath on the Handy Scandy um, isn't having that problem, so I can get to it. So I wanted to show you from far back uh, kind of the setup here, and now I'm going to move in closer to try to illustrate better uh, what I'm talking about with regard to the sheath use. So here we are with the Bravo One. I know this is kind of a weird angle, but I wanted you to see down in the hammock at what's going on here. Um, this angle, this being uh, kind of stiff here, um, it starts to push down into the fabric of the hammock and it doesn't really give a lot of room up to the side. Let me see if I can get this in frame here to show you. There we go. I, hopefully you can see that. Um, with the fabric being so tight, which it is in a hammock, you don't give a lot of play. So if you wanted to kind of relax, this could present a problem and going straight down doesn't do any better. Um, coming forward can work. It starts to twist and bunch up here on the belt loop. Um, and it does become kind of tight. And you could tell just by orientation that the knife doesn't want to sit that way. So it can be done, but it's not really that comfortable. And, um, you know, it just kind of, it doesn't have free movement. So this has become um, not my preference for sheaths, although I do really like the Bravo One. I haven't tested it in my head to head yet because I've had no time. So look out for that soon. But anyway, um, I do like the knife, but the problem right now is the sheath. And so I'm considering um, if I do wind up keeping the Bravo One long term, picking up maybe like a Bushcrafter style sheath from Blind Horse Knives or some other uh, vendor that makes uh, sheaths that are big enough for the Bravo one that do come in a dangler style. Um, and again, this is specifically because I'm a hammock camper and this is something that really kind of drives me nuts. Now I'm gonna switch out and show you what it looks like with the um, Handy Scandy and the Gunny. All right, so here we have the uh, Bushcrafter A style sheath again with the Handy Scandy. And because of the freedom of motion, um, it doesn't present a problem for me uh, in hammock use. Uh, if I'm sitting like this to put my shoes on, take my shoes off, it could go to the side, it could swing forward. Um, it's just got a lot of play. And then if I recline at all or do anything like that, I don't have any issues with, um, you know, it getting, uh, pushing through the fabric really hard at the bottom or up the side and not. Um, so again, that's just a quick take on uh, sheath preferences that I've come uh, to have because every time I am out overnight, I am taking uh, a hammock with me. Uh, tent campers, you may never experience a problem, although sitting on the ground um, does kind of have the same issue with those certain type of sheaths that they don't have a lot of give. Uh, to the side or to the front and back. Um, Treading sitting on the flat ground can present a problem too. But anyway, just a killer time video, something I just figured I would do while I had a couple minutes today um, and show you kind of some of my preferences. Hope you found that helpful. And as always, even if not, maybe it cured some boredom. Till next time, guys, be safe and God bless.